So the battle for Congress intensifies with a fiery debate between Senator Marco Rubio and his challenger, Val Demix. The senator who has never run anything at all but his mouth would know nothing about helping people. The congresswoman likes to talk about helping people. She's never passed a bill. She's never passed a single bill. The important topics on top of voters' minds both candidates touched on in the only Florida Senate debate just weeks away from the November election. Plus, a Florida officer hit by a car while directing traffic. Straight ahead, find out why Port St. Lucie police say it's an accident. And today's school board members in one local school district expected to take a closer look at security policies in place right now. Coming up, the three changes that they think could better protect students and staff. It's a new day. This is CBS 12 News This Morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Matt Lincoln. And I'm Sam Kerrigan. And you are in for a nice surprise when you walk out the door this morning. It is cooling off out there. It's beautiful <laughs> out there. Let's get to meet our host, Jen Collins. Uh, Jen, what are we looking at for temperatures out there right now? We got finally have a more refreshing air mass moving into place. A cold front has finally passed to our south. So we're going to usher in much cooler air over the next couple of hours. Already sitting at 68 degrees in West Palm Beach. Temperature difference, though, yeah, in the northern part of the state sitting in the 30s at this time. So we aren't the coolest on the map at all. But, of course, as the day rolls along, you're going to notice dew point temperatures will keep falling, indicating a more refreshing air mass moving into place. This afternoon, those dew point temperatures will still stay in the 50s. And when you see a dew point temperature in the 50s, the temperature outside kind of feels a lot cooler than what it actually is. Plus, when you factor in breezy north winds, it's going to feel a lot cooler this afternoon. All right, here's a look at that cold front finally moved to our south. We still have quite a bit of cloud cover uh, lingering around the area. Very quick moving high level clouds. So passing shower can't be ruled out as we have some lingering moisture in place. They're really going to notice temperatures for today struggling to even make it into the 70s for this afternoon. Many spots along the Treasure Coast will still stay in the 60s throughout the day. Our high temperature is actually this morning sitting in the mid 70s. Heading into tomorrow, we'll finally be back into the mid-70s, even reaching near 80 degrees. A sunny weekend ahead of us, too. We'll have a look at that on your 10-day forecast in just a few minutes. Jen, thank you. 603 now on time traffic. This is a look at the drive time from West Palm Beach to Port St. Lucie. It's about 40 minutes for you on I-95. That is normal for this time of day. Well, showdown in the race for Senate as Senator Marco Rubio and challenger Val Demings clash in the first and only debate between the candidates. They faced questions on several topics, including inflation, voting rights, gun violence, immigration and foreign policy at Palm Beach State College's Lake Worth campus. And CBS 12's Danielle DeRoss is at the live desk following what both candidates had to say. Danielle, walk us through some of the major moments here. Well, voters were able to see a clear contrast between these two candidates last night. Incumbent Republican Marco Rubio defended his record on issues like gun control, and he tried to paint challenger Val Demings as an extremist. Demings, a Democrat, says it's Rubio who's extreme on issues like abortion, providing one of the night's most fiery exchanges. Rubio defended his pro-life position, supporting bans on abortion even in cases of rape and incest. He accuses Demings of wanting abortion on demand without exceptions. I believe that innocent human life is worthy of the protection of our laws. That said, every bill I've ever sponsored on abortion, every bill I've ever voted for, has exceptions. Every one of them does, because that's what can pass, and that's what the majority of people support. No, Senator, I don't think it's okay for a 10-year-old girl to be raped and have to carry the seed of her rapist. No, I don't think it's okay for you to make decisions for women and girls as a senator. I think those decisions are made between the woman, her family, her daughter, and her faith. The two also had intense back and forth about gun control and if there needs to be tougher laws to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people like the Parkland school shooter. Rubia defended his support of a federal red flag law, while Deming says he hasn't done nearly enough. This is about taking dangerous guns out of the hands of dangerous people. And the overwhelming majority of people in our nation want us to do just that. How long will you watch people being gunned down in first grade, fourth grade, high school, college, church, synagogue, a grocery store, a movie theater, a mall, and a nightclub? 
Congresswoman, and do nothing. What makes no sense is that we're going to actually pass laws that only law-abiding people will follow and criminals will continue to violate. The truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, that Americans have a Second Amendment right to protect themselves. They have, and, and, and these killers that are out there, if they're intent on killing as they are, they have found multiple ways to get a hold of weapons and cause mass destruction. Rubio and Demings were also asked about Florida's property insurance crisis. Demings says that she wants to see the state and federal government come together and work on solutions, asking for another special legislative session to tackle this. Rubio wants to reform the flood insurance program, but he says that the federal government should stay out of what is a state issue. We have more debate recap on our website. Head to CBS12.com to see more. Matt and Sam. All right, Danielle, thank you. And this morning, we're getting a lot of reaction about some of the topics that you just touched on, including Democratic nominee for Governor Charlie Crist tweeting, Seinfeld Deming showed once again the Republicans can't defend their extreme abortion bans, and they won't even try. We're also hearing from the Republican Party of Florida, the committee woman Kathy King, saying Val Demings was the victim of her own crime, supporting the Pelosi policies that Floridians reject. Also, we're hearing from a Parkland parent, Fred Guttenberg saying Marco Rubio regarding the Parkland shooting just did what he does, runs in circles, saying and doing nothing. He has failed. This one is personal for me. Val Demings, thank you. And you are correct. Well, this race could be critical in determining which party ends up in control of the U.S. Senate. Right now, it's currently at a 50-50 deadlock, but Democrats have a majority because the chamber's rules call for the vice president to cast a tie-breaking vote. The latest numbers from a Mason-Dixon polling survey find that Senator Marco Rubio has a six-point lead over Representative Val Demings. You can see Rubio has 47 percent of the vote and Demings 41 percent. Another 10 percent of voters were undecided. This survey was taken of registered and likely Florida voters from the last week of September. Another important race to watch, of course, this November is the race for our governor. Governor DeSantis in Fort Myers giving an update on the progress being made on Sanibel Island following Hurricane Ian yesterday. Meanwhile, gubernatorial candidate Charlie Chris making stops in South Florida to rally voters. He was in West Palm Beach to talk about the state's property insurance crisis and then hosted a rally in Hollywood and met with residents and community leaders in Pinecrest. Chris' visit comes days after the governor held a rally in Coral Springs. Both the governor and Charlie Crist will take the stage in the only planned debate in the race for governor at Sunrise Theater in Fort Pierce. CBS 12 will be hosting the debate where both candidates will go head to head about some of the biggest issues in our state. And you could be a part of this debate moderated by our Liz Carantes. You can submit questions you would like the candidates to answer on debate night. And Matt has the website pulled up to show you just how you can submit those questions. Yes, yeah, Sam, it's easy and your friends, your family, anywhere else in the state can give questions and uh, watch this debate. It is being hosted by us in Fort Pierce. However, you can watch it online right here on our website, floridadebate2022.com, or anywhere across the state it is being broadcast. So you have family, friends across the state want to know where they can watch it, send them to this website that will have the answer. Uh, and of course, here right at the bottom of the site is where you can put in your name, your email, and put your questions. And of course, we're going to pick out the, the best ones. Liz Carantes will ask them during the debate, which is on Monday. And some important dates to keep in mind ahead of Election Day. Early voting starts in Palm Beach, St. Lucie, and Indian River counties on Monday. In Martin County, early voting starts a week from uh, a week from today. And in Okeechobee County, it starts on October 29th. Well, 609, we're following a developing story out of Port St. Lucie this morning. Now, last night, a Port St. Lucie police officer was hit while directing traffic. This happened near Southeast Felix Avenue and Southeast South Bend Boulevard. That's right near the Spruce Bluff Nature Preserve. And that's where we find our Stephanie Valderrama with the latest this morning. Stephanie, what can you tell us? Yes, good morning. So we are learning this all happened when officers responded to a three car crash. Now, once on scene, they were waiting for the cars to be towed. And during that, they were directing traffic. That's when investigators say another car was coming through the scene and hit the officer. Take a look there at your screen. These are pictures obtained by CBS 12 News of that crash from last night. We are told a 60 year old man was driving the white Toyota Avalon that hit the officer. Now, preliminary details reveal the driver was actually on his way home from work when the crash happened. According to investigators, the officer rolled onto the hood of the car into the windshield, cracking it, finally landing on the grass. The officer was immediately rushed to the hospital. 
Now this morning we can confirm the officer is going to be okay. He is being treated for non life threatening injuries. Now investigators believe that this crash is actually an accident. They say there's no uh, indication that the driver was impaired. Of course, count on us to keep you updated on any developing details. Reporting live in Port St. Lucie, Stephanie Valderrama, CBS 12 News. All right, Stephanie, thank you. You're looking at video also of a crash that killed four people, including two teenagers in Stewart yesterday. This happened at Northwest Baker Road and North Federal Highway near the Roosevelt Bridge. Florida Highway Patrol says a Tesla slammed into a minivan, flipped over and then caught fire. All four people in both cars died. 610 is now the time. Today, the Palm Beach County School Board will hold a meeting to talk about safety in our schools. Security policies constantly being looked at and updated as teachers, staff, and police must be ready for any threat at all times. Our Kara Duffy live from district headquarters this morning. Kara, today's meeting comes after a workshop dedicated to addressing some of these security concerns in our schools. So what changes could we expect to see? Well, that's right, Sam. During that workshop, school officials addressed three security policies that are in place right now, but that could use some more enforcement and strengthening. Now, first, the school officials addressed the new system known as Alyssa's Alert. It requires all district employees to carry a badge that, with the push of a button, can place a school on code red and alert authorities. Board members discussed the need to revisit training after that new alert system triggered a handful of false alarm since the start of school. The second issue addressed locking gates and doors during classes. School board members want to harden the procedure by making it clear that teachers and staff will face repercussions if doors and gates are not locked. And finally, the topic discussed was Fortify Florida. Now, this is an online suspicious activity reporting tool that was set up by the state, and officials want this app installed on every student's district-issued device. And Matt, Sam, just this week, we saw a prime example of just how important it is. The see something, say something policy. A student over at Palm Beach State uh, College, they reported when another student was making threats online, it actually led to an arrest. And that is exactly uh, the mission behind this app, Fortify Florida. That's the goal here to stop something before it happens. Again, these new measures will be uh, talked about and possibly voted on at this evening's school board meeting. And certainly we'll have an update about what happens at that meeting coming up tomorrow. Also, residents in a Palm Beach Gardens community told to pack up their bags and leave. Why they're being forced out of their homes at a time where the state is facing a housing crunch. And Hurricane Ian taking a toll on the mental health of those who lost everything in the storm. What the state is doing right now to help those affected. That's coming up next on CBS 12 News This Morning.